Are you still flying your drone photogrammetry missions using the standard regular grid? What if I told you there's another way, how you can capture even better quality data? Today we will be flying over this tremendously large laser tag polygon and compare two different methods of drone photogrammetry. Number one, using the standard grid to do an oblique mission using DJI Pilot 2 and number two, using the new circulogrammetry tool found in UGCS. From the data we gather, we will be creating 3D models and then comparing them in terms of level of detail, number of photos, needed for each of the models, number of flight time, and other different parameters, and try to determine which one of these methods is best. And so here you can see the circle gramtry mission planned inside of EGCS. So you can see the flight height here is set at 35 meters. We will be flying at the same altitude in DJI Pilot 2 to make this comparable. Uh, flight speed will be at 10 meters per second. The radius of each circle is 20 meters. Uh, shots per circle are determined automatically. But here you can see that per each circle, the drone will be doing 17 shots and the camera angle will be set at 45 degrees. Overlap between circles will be set to 50%. And here you can see the mission planned in DJI Pilot 2. So actually DJI Pilot 2 constructs two different missions. But what you, what you might notice is that firstly, this mission takes the drone way out of the planned area in both of these cases. And next you can see the total flight time actually exceeds the flight time plan for the circle grametry. And okay, so now we're ready to launch the drone and go collect some data. Okay, so now we are back in the office and let's take a look at what data we managed to gather and let's compare the results. So let's first take a look at the results we got from flying at 35 meter altitude with both Pilot 2 and Circulogrammetry. For data processing, I used Agisop Metashape. In both cases, the amount of images were more or less the same in both datasets as well as the processing method was exactly the same. And now here on the screen, you can see the result from uh, DJI Pilot 2. First, you see we have this labyrinth over here. In this texture view, you might not yet notice a lot of issues with this. However, let's jump into the elevation view. And now in the elevation view, the issues are a bit more apparent. So you can see that in some of these cases, at the connection points of the walls, you might see that it's not very accurate and that uh, it's just kind of trying to blend in all of this uh, detail that's actually here. Okay, and here you can see that in the case of using circle grammetry, it, the structure of the whole labyrinth is a lot uh, better. You can see that the circle grammetry managed to reproduce the geometry of the labyrinth a lot better. If you look at this labyrinth from the side, you might also see that the uh, tops of the walls, they are quite straight, at least as straight as they can be uh, relative to the altitude from which the data was captured. And now let's take a look at uh, Pilot 2 example again. And in case of Pilot 2, you can see that we are losing a bit of this geometry at the tops uh, of the uh, the walls here. And actually, if you look at, for example, this chimney and overall the wall, it seems actually not bad. We can see that here on this uh, ladder that's on the side of the building, there are some parts missing. So here we are in the uh, circle gram tree results. And I would say that actually, in this case, they are quite comparable. Uh, you can also see that some segments on the ladder are missing. I think in this case, it did manage to capture the sides of the ladder just maybe slightly better. Uh, chimney also looking very, uh, very similar, maybe a bit sharper geometry, but uh, it's quite close, I would say. Also bear in mind that uh, when both these datasets were captured, then the lighting conditions were a bit different. Unfortunately, this was not a cloudy day when we were flying. So there was sun and of course the shadows were moving as well. And so this could have some impact on the final results that you see. And now let's take a look at some other details we can see here in this model. So this is the dataset from DJI Pilot 2. And let's, for example, take a look at the next building. And this is actually where we can already see some issues appearing. So in this case, since as you can see, this area is quite covered with trees all around, you can see that when capturing the facade of this building, 
from the 35 meter height. And actually looks like some parts of the trees somehow during the stitching, they managed to end up on the facade of the building. So unless you do a separate flight for the facade of the building, this is an issue you might face when flying standard missions with DJI Pilot 2. And here you can see that in the results of circle grammetry, somehow this facade of the building, it is a lot better. So you can see uh, the texture of the building. You don't really see any uh, tree details randomly sticking on it. So here we can say that circle grammetry is the clear winner in this uh, specific case. And now here you can see what results we managed to get in this case from DJI Pilot 2. So again here actually you can see some similar issues like we saw on the facade of the building. You can see that the ground is actually covered with the leaves uh, and some branches. So these could be some details from the trees around. So as the drone was flying over this area, somehow uh, the processing software also interpreted these details to be uh, located over there. And now you can see as we're looking at the ground that it's looking a lot more clear. So you can still see some texture similar to what we had in the DJI Pilot dataset, but a lot less. So here, if we zoom into, for example, these uh, wooden racks with the tires on, on the car, then the texture here is a lot more clear. So here you can see it overall, all of the objects are covered, but for example, you might notice some details missing, such as here, for example, this door of the truck, it's not fully captured, so the top is missing. Here as well, uh, the geometry isn't perfect, as well as some other slight defects uh, like that. And so here in the result of circle geometry, you might see that some objects are a bit better, such as for example, for this truck, the door shape is a lot more clear uh, to how it is in reality. Same situation over here. This is probably some defect due to the reflection from the uh, glass. So yeah, overall, I think we can say that these small details, the small geometry, this is represented just a bit better in the circle geometry results. But now I'd like to take you back to the very first object we were looking at, the labyrinth. So over the whole area, we flew at an altitude of 35 meters simply because of the trees within this area. So the trees are very close to the buildings. However, since the labyrinth is located in a space that's a lot more open, we decided to do a lower altitude flight above it. However, one issue we, which we encountered is that actually with DJI Pilot 2, it was not really possible for us to do this uh, flight because the way how the oblique flights are done in DJI Pilot is that this it takes the area that's there in the middle and then it expands it to the sides and actually in both um, directions since it does the double grid. And since there are uh, towers and trees around, we just could not risk crashing our drone into one of them. So that's why the results you'll be seeing from the labyrinth currently, this will be only from the circle geometry flight. And that's actually one of the uh, benefits of the circle geometry, the fact that it allows you to actually scan some smaller areas at a lower altitude, even when there are larger objects around. So you can still do those oblique capture flights and capture good data in those areas. So here we flew at an altitude of 20 meters, and you can see it, obviously the results here are a lot better. So we managed to capture the whole labyrinth in a lot more detail. So this includes, of course, all the uh, signs which are here on the uh, walls of the labyrinth, as well as all the details which are inside of it. So all these wooden railings and everything, this was cap captured a lot better using the circle geometry tool. Of course, ideally these results should be repeated on a cloudy day and they should be even better. But still we can now switch on over to the uh, elevation model and then we can see how it all looks like in there. And here we can see that the results are even better when compared to the circle geometry done at a higher altitude and compared to DJI Pilot 2. You might also notice that there are, of course, some taller towers, some taller trees. And so with the circle geometry tool, we were able to fly only over this specific area and capture the data. And so one really great thing about circle geometry is that you have a lot of control over how much data you want to gather over a given area. And like I mentioned earlier, the fact that you can fly at a lower altitude and cover only the area that you're interested in. Moreover, circle geometry also allows you to cover the area from a lot of different angles, allowing you to have more detailed results of different uh, 3D objects, different complex geometry located on the ground. And so in conclusion, firstly, circle geometry manages to collect more accurate data from the same height compared to standard oblique photogrammetry methods, as you saw in the example of the labyrinth. Moreover, it gives you a lot of control over the camera angle and over the exact area you want to capture as well as the amount of data within that area. 
Thirdly, circulogrammetry also allows you to capture data at a lower altitude, which gives you a possibility to collect better, higher resolution data when there are different obstacles around the area that you want to survey. Because compared to standard oblique photogrammetry methods, circulogrammetry does not extend the whole area. So it allows you to capture a lot of different angles within the same area and thus create a really good model and capture well these really complex uh, geometrical structures. If you want to try it out for yourself, visit our website to try the new circulogrammetry tool and tell us what you think. And stay tuned for more videos on circulogrammetry and its different applications. See you in the next one. Bye.